Hey everyone, Fall Ahmed here, this time bringing you a guide on optimizing your crop placement, production, as well as the go-to places to get them early in the game. A lot of us end up building clunky farms with floating and out-of-place plants, limited to only placing them in dirt and spaced out due to their collision boxes. Thankfully, we have our trusty concrete column to fix this issue. This comes in handy when you're short in space, and for this to work, make sure the plant has visible crops ready for harvest. Otherwise, plants cannot be selected using this method. Put the concrete column beside it and press E until both are selected. You can actually stack crops on top of each other and make room for other things in your settlement. It makes harvesting crops a lot easier too. Even the garden plots have very limited space for crops and it's sort of weird how the game has to have your crops so spaced out, leaving all this empty, unused soil in your garden plot. This trick works with almost literally any object. I made a greenhouse and utilized this technique to set up my farm. Here I made some makeshift planters with some floor pieces and some brown mats that looked like dirt. I use bat tops as well since I don't have those fancy planters like in Great Garden Settlement. Keep in mind each settler assigned to food resources can only handle up to 12 units of food. When the yield is 0.5 such as carrots, melons, potatoes, razor grain or corn. Mud fruits, crops yield one food per plant and settlers assigned to it will handle up to six of them. Your priority in crops should be corn, mud fruit and potatoes. That's because you need three of each to make five adhesive in the cooking station. Adhesive is a material that's used for a number of crafts and settlement buildings, so it's essential that you have a steady flow of this material. Now here are some places where you can find crops of each vegetable relatively early in the game. Potatoes and watermelon are at Avernati Farm. Mud fruit and corn can be found at Grey Garden. Carrots and corn in the slog. Razor grain and corn in Finch Farm. Gourds in Concord and Sanctuary. Likewise, you can just claim these settlements since they already have the farm set up. If you play survival, you'll eventually want to make vegetable soups to quench both hunger and thirst. Although, melons do the same as well. Each settler will eat one food unit per 24 in-game hours. Be mindful that there is sometimes a cap on your settlement's food production. For safe measure, make sure the workshop in your farm settlement has zero food of any kind in it. If your farm stopped producing, this is probably why. Simply withdraw your food and put it in a container outside your workshop. Lucy at Avernati Farms buys melons for three caps each or five caps if you pass a speech check early in the interaction. Mr. Brown at Great Gardens buy mud fruit for two caps each. Yeah, I'll take those caps now. And Abigail at Finch Farm buys corn for two caps each as well. Here's your caps. Know that once you claim a settlement, they'll stop buying crops from you. In any case, there are far better ways of making caps, but this is just another way. Lastly, you will need to set up defenses totaling the sum of your settlement's food and water production. The base chance of attack is 2% for any settlement, and this chance goes up by 1% for every 100 food in the workbench, and 1% for every 100 water as well. It does go down with more defense rating, so do the best you can to set up your defenses. Settlement raids have predetermined spawn points, so put your defenses around these spots and arm your settlers well. Here are the spawn points for Starlight Drive-In. The first one is just south, The second point is north of Starlight Drive-In, right behind the workshop. 
and the last spawn point is north as well just beside the second spawn point and there is also a random encounter nearby just below the railroad bridge so make sure you have defenses on that side as well anyway guys i hope you found this guide helpful please let me know in the comments and as always thanks for watching Easy living, this ain't.